Amber is dying. I've been sort of put into the back of my mind and pretending it hasn't been happening. But now it's it's kind of it's kind of there. So the gearbox that if you've been following along um, for a while, you know, and all the trouble I've had with it and the fact that it's been rebuilt, um, it's starting to give way again. I'm pretty sure a bearing of some sort has gone in the gearbox as well because once you get up to speed and it warms up, there is a horrific noise coming from it. Uh, the diff is becoming almost unmanageable now. Um, the, the play is pretty major. The radiator isn't doing its job properly. The intercooler isn't doing its job properly. The engine itself, uh, there's something wrong there. It's become very smoky, very sluggish. Could be a simple fix. Um, could be something a lot more serious. But you know when you just know there ain't something right there. The uh, steering rack could do with being replaced because it's, it's like driving the Flintstones car now. I think every shock has now gone. Um, so the ride is terrible. I've always, like, you know when you hear on uh, Top Gear Challenges when they're getting towards the end and they're saying, This is pretty close to undrivable now. Right! Like, what would that feel like um, to have a vehicle that far gone? What sort of, what do they mean? I now know. And then as of last week, um, the air suspension compressor again died. So now I don't have any air suspension. Uh, I've jerry-rigged a, a little compressor in there for now, but it's, it's not up to the task. Uh, so yeah, I'm essentially um, mobilised again and with everything sort of mounting up it's now sort of it could be the end for the van <coughs> which um, I don't I don't really want to So there's a few options, strip all of the equipment inside, out, um, and basically look for a new van to start afresh and redeem a, a, as much cash off this as I can with, you know, selling parts on and uh, weighing the box in and, you know, stuff like that. Option two would be to um, make it good enough to make the trip down to Portugal. Um, where I can put her on the land and retire her. Oh, there's option three, which is just <laughs> not any possible. Uh, buying a whole of the Sprinter, a uh, 416 twin wheel in this spec, and either moving the box and everything onto the new van, or ripping the new van apart for all of its bits and essentially rebuilding Amber. I mean, <laughs> one good luck finding the truck, uh, two, that is a lot of work. So naturally I went for the latter. So I was a little bit stuck and wondering how I was going to get out of this one until a lovely bloke called Alex and his dad from Beaumont Landscaping got in touch and said we've got an old sprinter here that's the same as yours, a little bit heavier and uh, it spares and repairs if you want it. They weren't asking a crazy amount for it and with van prices at minute it was a fair price so I didn't even haggle. It's got nearly all the parts I need on it to do what I need to do and then a couple more hundred quid to get it delivered here because it's far from roadworthy. And uh, here we are. I'm just not ready to let go of Amber yet. She's been good to me, 
Most of the parts broken on it now are because I fucked them up. For what's involved, I can basically get a rebuilt and actually recoup some of the money back from parts I don't use because parts for these T1Ns are now getting quite hard to get. And it even come with a full tank of diesel, so you know I'm siphoning that. So, parts on my mind so far. First job is removing the leaf springs so that I can get my van's arse off the ground and semi-drivable again. And that'll be a joyous goodbye to the air suspension. So that's the two rear leaf springs, but also I want to try and save the shocks. Hopefully they'll all be in good enough conditions to use. Next is the engine. No matter what way I go about this, the engine's got to come out of this one. From there I can decide whether just to take the essentials like injectors, pumps, sensors, glow plugs and all the essentials that fit to both mine and Emma's van. But this van has only done 58,000 miles, meaning the engine has hardly run in, so it might just make sense to swap the whole lump, gearbox and all, into mine. Speaking of gearbox, unlike most vehicles this age, changing a Mercedes Sprinter from semi-auto to manual is not an easy task. Not only do I need the gearbox itself, pedal box, linkages, gear stick and all the general things you can think of. I also need to swap the vehicle's ECU so it knows it's no longer controlling the gearbox. I need to take out the entire vehicle's electrics and wiring loom because Mercedes like to make them custom to each vehicle. That also means I need the ignition key and barrel and a lot more. I'll delve further into that later in the series. Everything electrically needs to be swapped right down to the wheel speed sensors so that the ECU's happy. The ECU is basically the vehicle's brain, and Mercedes, even right back in the early 2000s, were masters of making this unfathomably complicated. Other items include the radiator and intercooler, because both of mine aren't genuine and they don't really do their job properly, steering column and steering rack, front brake calipers, as I still haven't replaced the one that burnt out coming down Stelvio Pass, a whole load of the interior trim, even some of the exterior trim if it's in good enough nick, like the front bumper's not too bad. I did also want to swap out the rear differential in this, but for reasons I'll explain in a little bit, that unfortunately isn't going to be possible. But with all the parts I can use, and with the van's extremely low mileage, this, I hope, will pay off. Bit of a shame, because she still runs and drives, but in the job that she used to do, she's just a little bit far gone. Decommissioning and ending this sprinter's life will prolong Amber's tenfold, so... Sorry, old gal. thing about a manual gearbox that I'm quite looking forward to. <laughs> I tell you what though, it's pretty gutless compared to mine and that is down to the diff. I was hoping because my diff is shagged that I could take this one swap it straight out with the leaf springs, bolt on, job done. Unfortunately with this being the 616, which means it's the 6 tonner, it's got uh, a different diff, which is a, the wrong ratio. This is why this is so slow. Uh, it's not designed for speed, it's designed to haul heavy shit. And if I was to put that on my van, it'd be slow as shit. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to sell that diff, try and recoup some money, and then I can order... All I need on mine is a the crown and pinion they're just doing a bit of that at the minute so <clears throat> i believe the reason this come off the road however many years ago is solely down to the uh, air brakes the, because this is a six tonner it's got uh, an air brake system and i think they've just had a lot of problems with it put it in a shed to fix it at a later date and it never got round to it um and yeah it's just just that little bit too far gone i think so those of you thinking, why don't you just take the box off and all the stuff, slam it on this new Sprinter. It's a bigger job to lift that off, try and detach the slap head, remove all the electrical systems, take the Talmer off and all the stuff that's on this. Uh, the new bloody tow hitch, I have to re-weld all that again. Um, it's actually a lot more work than just to pill for this for parts and move them on to amber. Ooh, shocks. I really hope the shocks are okay actually, because I could, do with those 
Where do they attach? Why do they attach in there? Do they attach like that on mine? I just had to... I think I'm going to get some LPG and so I had to borrow Jeff's air compressor that's used for sandblasting so the van just went pssst. Uh, it got there, by the time I got there it was half inflated by the time I got down this road it was bumpy and you little bastards are going to save me this one looks a little scabby that one's basically brand new um, so I'm going to get these blasted up I'm going to have to change all the shackles and whatever you probably be able to save the bump stops and yeah, it's just a, such a bloody shame that that diff's different. Oh, there's a lot of work ahead. Everything is just so bloated. Spend your whole life in salt, you poor bastard. So yeah, a bit of a shed, but enough parts to um, basically make amber work again, including manual gearbox. You basically need an entire donor van to do the manual conversion. It's a big job, but um, with my gearbox, well, if you've watched the channel, you know my gearbox, uh, it's got to go. So we've got this here. The linkages are a little bit stiff, but I'm pretty sure on sprinters they are pretty... Um, pretty renowned for being are you comfortable there buddy you like it in here right? yeah the linkages are pretty renowned for getting a bit of shit and this was a gritting wagon so everything on it is coated in salt and rust but inside you wouldn't tell it's immaculate in here um, obviously you're only 58,000 on the clock it it should be really uh, Alex and his dad um, I think took quite a bit of pride in this van at one point because inside it's it's just so clean and as for the engine it's pretty damn sweet there's a little bit of a clang but I mean it's been sat in a shed for I don't know how many years uh, there's no no smoke coming out the back, which mine currently is. Um, so I've got to weigh up the options basically. Is it warm? I don't know what. Happened. It is a bit warm in here, isn't it, dude? Hey, go on. Then. Do I take all the good bits off this engine and make mine good and strap the gearbox to it, or do I take this engine and gearbox the whole thing out, rip my engine out, and put the whole lump in? I, I don't know yet. In here alone, I mean, the seats are good. Um, the dash is good, I can take a few bits of the dash, the glove box because my glove box is knackered, uh, the glass because my glass is all scratched, Emma's having the sun visors um, and the bee posts, I'm going to have the, there it is, the rain, everything else um, I'm going to try and sell to recoup some cash because this has absolutely skinted me out and I've still got to pay for other bits like bushes, you know, the perishable bits I'm not going to be able to take, but my plan is to uh, sell what's on this to get it gone so if anyone needs the seats or the doors although the doors aren't the best or any of the bits um i'll be selling bits on Ooh, the heater units everything in here feels new the steering rack i'll be having that as well i can put mercedes seat belts in lance considering you chewed them both i've got most of your basic tools but throughout this job i was going to need some extras starting with a new jack so i could get the van up in the air and nick them leaf springs but first and foremost, this new truck is mine after all, so I need to make it my own and brand it. Being that it's going in the scrapyard though, I'm not going to be spending any money on that. The moment the van arrived, I whacked the WD out and doused absolutely everything I could find. So all the suspension assembly had a few hours to soak and let it all work in and loosen everything up. Hopefully. To be honest, the bolts look like they're just going to snap. Something I could really do without when it comes to the carriers. The shocks are in the same sort of state, but what's nice about this truck is, unlike mine, there's not a ginormous box on top of it. You can get to everything from below and above, making getting the tools of persuasion in there a whole lot easier. 
As for the U-bolts that hold the springs to the axle, I'm not even going to attempt them. They are getting cut. I've just got this off, gone through it all and yeah, the, the camera wasn't on. But despite the fact the bolts on everything look absolutely knackered, like that. They've actually just come off really loose. Just got the top one out of that. Now we're on to this one, but this one is the big old diffs in the way. Even that one, lovely. Now I've done a few of these videos where I'm taking bits of vans apart and making mine good and, and a lot of people get in touch and sort of have this uh, wrong view that I'm like a mechanic. Uh, so right off the bat, I am not a mechanic. I do what I do to get by. This for me is a colossal project <laughs> and I'm doing it with very basic, m mostly shit tools. So my point is, if I can do it with my situation, um, anyone can do it. Don't use my videos as educational, but with the power of YouTube and a bit of research, a Haynes manual, you can, you can fix most things on your vehicle. Really bloody, yeah, that's proper sharp. Oh, clean them up. Yeah, they've still got some juice in them, which mine do not. Yeah, mine don't have that. <laughs> so, they're a damn sight better. Nah, I spoke a little bit too soon. Once we got down to the leaf springs themselves, the bolts weren't having none of it. Even with the full weight of me on them, they were going nowhere. But it was at this point I realised once I take the leaf springs off, the van can no longer drive. So before I did that, I spun it round so it would be in a better position for disassembly. I then got back onto the leaf springs extremely briefly, hurled a few choice words and gave up. Now I'm going to admit defeat on these today because they're not going to be coming off without a serious amount of either heat um, and you could go get like a proper blowtorch. Ah, I have one and it's in the van. They won't be powerful enough anyway. Tim Scott told me about some stuff he's got. Maxi. It's a uh, fucking hell. Tim, what did you tell me about the other day? Ten times hotter than whatever normal gas. I need that. Or just lock the bolts off. But I kind of want to be able to keep the bolts because they're really weird sizes. Yeah. After that defeat, I moved on to the front, removing the trim and bits I want for my van, like the petrol cap, or stripping parts out of the way to make the bigger jobs easier. My quest for plunder brought me inside where I started stripping down sections of the dashboard to see what was involved for the big loom removal. I bought a few trim panels from my van so that I could swap them out for the good ones. Just going to pause right here. No other Sprinter owners. I don't have any of the vents. I know that the vents snap and I know that they're very hard to get hold of. No, I don't have any for you. These rarest of items are mine. Almost get it out. The taco put up one hell of a fight trying to get that out. Oh god damn it. They've got special security clips, so I guess drivers can't tamper with them. But they were no match for my Neanderthal mic. Nothing a quick screwdriver and a stab around can't fix. All joking aside though, I was taking a little bit of care as I had to fit all this back into my van. So all the wiring that was being disconnected was getting labelled up and lots of photos were being taken as reference points. And that statement's gonna be void in about five, four, three, two, one. Oh, 
from Japan. Whilst I was busy tucking in, Lance had gone for a nap in the most inappropriate spot ever. That's not very good practice, to be honest. Oh, that's making me shiver just looking at that. Oh. Oh. Right, I've been at it most of the day. I haven't done a fat lot apart from trying faff and look at what I need and stuff like that. I've also been online doing a bit of research. So because Mercedes, um, they don't do looms like everyone else where they just have plugs and if you have say electric windows you plug in the electric windows now the entire loom is custom to everything meaning uh, no airbags no electric windows um, I've got uh, a few other uh, extras I can't they're not coming to mind right now but stuff just won't work when I do this swap oh I knew that they have to have the cluster the ECU, the uh, screen unit, I think it is, the that basically reads the key, and there's a box on the back of here that also, I think that's Scream and Scran, I can't remember, they've got names for everything, but I've just took some of this stuff out of the dash, I took the, da the taco out, and now uh, the mileage disappears on the, on the cluster, and the speedo will also not work because the taco in this is factory fitted therefore if you take the taco out it all goes up it so I'm gonna have to add the taco somewhere into the into the van it's hard basically that's that's the be all and end all of it yeah there's a lot there's a lot to do my main real worry is that I'm gonna get all this done rip my van apart and my van is worse to rip the dash out of because all the ambulance wiring still behind there um do it all and then i'm going to turn that key and the dreaded start error message is going to come up you know it's one thing to do this big job on say work van my van is my house and if my house doesn't move i can't go anywhere it's just a big task folks and i'd be lying to you if i said i wasn't nervous I've also just had to call Paul um, and ask him about the mileage issue because obviously when I do this swap my mileage is going to go from 300 odd thousand to 58 thousand I'm like what's the um, kind of issue there if any um, am I going to have some issues with the DVLA or um, but no apparently not I just got to put a little note uh, for the MOT saying clocks changed at X amount of miles I've already gone down the, the thought process of uh, I'm scared I don't want to do it I'm gonna sell the van already <laughs> after owning it for about nine hours um, but who would I sell it to it's rotten as a pair um, it's not roadworthy the doors are falling off it yeah I'm just gonna have to do it. some error codes because it's a different ratio and I can't get a straight answer out of Mercedes. 